All right, well, all right, let's kind of get started on this. First of all, I just want to say that these are my ideas that I'm going to put out today. This is my disclaimer, okay? These are my ideas on how I think kites fly, why they don't fly, how to bridle a kite, how not to bridle a kite, uh, how to fix kites, how not to fix kites. And I'm sure there's people on this campus that would disagree with probably every other word I'll say today. <laughs> but, uh, well, they're not in here, so. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, uh, you know, I've been, I build custom kites. There's several people in this room that know that. Uh, I repair a lot of kites. And there's a couple people in this room that know what I do on that end. And I think they would all agree that my kites fly. Okay, so that's kind of my background, a little bit of my background. Okay, so today, let me see here. Okay, so today we want to cover, I'm going to sit down here so I can read. I can't read standing. <laughs> okay, so what we want to do, we want to cover the techniques of tuning and correcting kites as they, as they fly, as well as how to uh, bridle a new kite that you might be building, or how to rebridle uh, an old kite that's you've had the bridle lines cut, or you're just not sure of and you just need to rebridle a kite. Because a lot of times that's all you need to do to fix a kite that's not flying is put a new set of bridles on there. Even though they look okay, they measure out okay, they just lost that stretch that they need to have. And I don't know how many kites I've fixed over the years just by replacing the bridles. And that's, when it comes to like fixing a kite, so many, I, I see this all the time on Facebook, on the kite builder pages, where they're having problems with a kite in the sky. And all the comments are, well, you need to start uh, sewing up all the vents and uh, cutting, <laughs> cutting off the, front ends and sewing, uh, you know, taping straws to the leading edges, <laughs> so on and so forth, then I, I keep thinking, why not find the problem why it's not flying correctly, fix that problem, then you might, your problem might be solved, rather than going to those drastic extremes. Because if you do that, then your kite will probably never fly again. And we see, I've seen that. Okay. 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 So now, probably the number one reason a lot of you are in here today. So a lot of you have probably been out, probably made your kite, and you've seen your kite or a kite flying, and it's got that tilt to it. Mm -hmm. Haven't you? Mm -hmm. And of course, as we're, we're not playing on the bottom. Of course, now when we're on the ground, we see the kite like this. Or it looks like this, isn't it? Right? Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like. But in reality, it's flying something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Some angle. So when we see it, it looks like maybe that mm -hmm. or that. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So we think it's tilting that way, so we'll pull this down like that. But in reality, what's happening is it's it's just like that. In other words, one side is tilted down or like that. In other words, one side's got a bit more lift than the other. Just like on the uh, Peter Lynn pilots. Mm -hmm. Like on a Peter Lynn pilot, if it's lifting one way or the other, they tell you to adjust the, uh, the B line to reduce the lift on this side. Well, of course, on a flow form, you can't do that because you don't have a B line. So, what most people will do is, of course, they'll start shortening this line or that line over there. Alternatively, if there was enough slack over here, you could just flat that line out and let that side go up. 
Don't you have to do another one too? Hmm? Don't you have to do another one of the lines in too? You can't just just one line on the pad, I don't think. Well, uh, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Okay? <laughs> it depends on how much you want to do it. But uh, usually if you've got a pipe that's really tilted, if you have to do much more than say a, a two inch, okay, then you've got something terribly wrong someplace. Because if you shorten this too much, yeah, you'll start pulling this over, but it'll start looking really wonky up there in the sky. It'll just look weird. Okay? Launch. It, it just looks really weird if you start shortening this too much. So that's when you need to start looking at why is it flying crooked. Make sense? Yeah, you're, you're talking about it flying crooked in what way that you would have to shorten that one. Well... Which way is it crooked? Okay. In other words, let's say it's, you're looking at it this from the sky, and let's say it's flying, it looks like it's flying like this. All right? Mm -hmm. So most people would well, shorten yeah. this side yeah. and bring it yeah. over. back. Or like the mouse side. <laughs> okay. Or if you had enough slack over here, you could let this out, and it would let that fly up. But since most kites that you buy, this has been trimmed off, so your only alternative is to pull that back. That's what most people are going to try first. I mean, I've even tried that, mm -hmm. just to see how far off it is. But if you have to do it more than two inches, uh, you start creating a whole lot of problems. Because as you start pulling this in, you start putting more pull on this side. It, you know, yeah, so you can uh, get a uh, lot of problems. Hmm. So the big, the biggest thing, I'd say anything over two inches, bring the thing down and start looking at uh, what could be wrong otherwise. And what are some of those other things that could be wrong, just to give us? For well, example? it could be for one, tangled bridles down here. Simply tangled bridles. I've had that happen on me. All the time it happens. I mean, you get in a hurry out on the kite field to get this thing launched, and this is all tangled up. Yeah, it's a big mess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like this. Yeah. It, it doesn't take much. Too many wraps of this in and out. See? Yeah. Before you suddenly got, you just shortened this maybe an inch or two. An inch or two. It's amazing how much that shortens up. I did that myself. Uh, maybe one or two kite flies ago. On my big 420. I was in a hurry to get it up. <laughs> it was flying crooked. So I brought it down. Sure enough, it was all tangled. All tangled down to the bottom end. So, but if you bring it down and that's not it. If it's a new kite or an older kite. Just do the old, uh, of course it's hard to do on, on these, but you know, run your, uh, your lines up. Start down here and then run your lines up. Make sure they are all still the same length. Make sure they haven't overly stretched. You know what I'm saying on that? Stretch from end to end? Stretch from one line to the other? Difference in one line to the other is what you're saying? Yeah, let me bring up this one here. I do this all the time out there. I'm the only way out to it. Yeah. You know, in other words, just bring your pipe, just bring your, your matching lines together. Make sure they match up here. Because once again, uh, if you get older tight lines, as the strings start to uh, stretch out, so you just match up the pairs and shut Yeah, them. just make sure they uh, match up. Make sure they match up. And then, once again, if it's an older type, uh, make sure you don't have any knots in this line. Okay, I didn't get that one with me. But, this is, uh, 
This is a 500 pound line. If I tie a single overhand knot in this, how much do you think this line will decrease? Well, it's like 50%. Well, I'm sorry, distance or strength? Distance. Half an inch. Close to an inch. inch. Huh? Closer to an inch. An inch? Yeah. One inch. And this is part of thinking about this, the, the simplest things are the The simplest things there. are the, yeah. And I don't know how, but I have seen these single overhand knots in these kite lines. How do you do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen that. Maybe a loop, but not an overhand knot. Yeah, but anyway, and another thing, uh, that I see way too often is where someone has had their bridles cut and then they tie, tie it together. Tie it together. <laughs> and then you've got probably a four inch uh, story. Yeah, that's gotcha. you know? yeah. yeah. And then they just keep flying like that. And of course, there again, once you get a big old knot like that in those bridle lines, if you get crossed with somebody else, that's a good point where that other kite line is going to come down and just cut right through there again. Yeah. And I'm sure that's never happened to anybody. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Okay. So, we're going to move right on here. Okay, yeah. So look for uh, tank bridles. Oh, another thing with having these brightness all tanks up down here at the bottom, these will change real easy down here if you don't keep those on tangles. And this is always a good chafing point. So look for uh, uh, where they can be worn out. So keep an eye on those. All right. Your, one of your handouts there for like a flow form. We've got a little calculator in here, or I'll show you how to do that. Did y'all download that diagonal app? Download it to this one. Or one of those? The triangle app. Yeah, yeah the triangle yeah, app. I have one, but I'm on this phone. It's a lot. It, it's pretty, pretty simple to use, really. So if you can open those apps up and you can kind of run those numbers that's on your little thing here. Because every app is different. You know, it's usually A for the that side of the triangle and then B, then you figure for C. That's your angles. So you have to figure your angles. Uh, differently for an eight cell and of course for a six cell. If you only got four keels on your kite, that's differently. Like if you got a 125 volt, yeah, you only got four four keels, right? So you have to figure that out a little bit differently. And you don't listen to the people who start telling you to cut more nut holes on it. Go talk to Tony. <laughs> Huh. Give me the courage to tell them to go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, on a typical full form, we got five keels. So you start off figuring how long your center bridle should be. Okay. Now for me, I use one and a half times the span of the kite or the width of the kite. Hmm. Some people use the length of the kite. Okay, I use the, the span or the width of the kite. I use 1.5 for my measurements. 
the radius. And if you're uh, using a 252, that just happens to come out to be 252 inches long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm always found that fascinating, but yeah, you know, that's what it, what it comes out to be. So, so why are you using the uh, width as opposed to the length? Is that just experience? You found it works better. Experience. Out of string and it's, a line. I don't know. It's just what. It's work. Yeah, it works. It works. I think I, most, most people kind of, use the span. There's a few. I only know a couple people that use the length. I don't know. Okay. okay. But, and I use 1.5, some will use a 1.8 for a flow form, I use 1.5. It works good. Well, it's less weight on the bridle too, so. Well, when it comes to bridles, you know, I've got that down there. Uh, the question is raised, maybe Mark raised that question, what size of bridle I to use for your bridles? Actually, in some ways, you can kind of think of your bridle line bridle lines as an extension of your tight line. So uh, it really makes little difference as to how physically heavy this is, because your kite's going to pick it up, because you've got so little here. Uh, compared with the weight of the line. If you're yeah, compared to the weight of the line. Yeah. So if I'm flying, if I got my kite and I'm flying on a 500 pound line, uh, you know, I'll use 250 pound line for these. It makes it easier to tie these little knots. It makes it easier just to handle the kite itself. The only time I would really use really light bridle lines it would be if you got a you know light wind kite you're trying to butts with. But other than that, if you think the kite's going to lift it, I use it. The, the uh, length you're talking about is which, the one and a half times the width is which? Is the, the center. Out, the center. The center. Okay. So it's one and a half times your width, and that comes up with your center line. That's where okay? your toe, that's set your toe point, and then it's angles from there. Yeah. Okay. And then on your your calculator thing there, so this is your center here. On here, you would, once again, I don't know. Okay. Depending on what app you got, you would put like the, the 200 in this case on that triangle on the long edge of your triangle. Type in like that 200. And then this distance here would be uh, your 50 inches for the top of the triangle. Okay, then if you hit calculate, it should be a, somewhere where we hit like calculate, and then that should give you your distance for your inside bridle line. Does that come out okay for you? It should match uh, the drawing here, very close. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it does. Did you come up with it, Christy? No, I didn't. No, you didn't? I well, because I wasn't sure which I'm in the app. Okay. Here but then an ad popped up. Oh I guess. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. So, I so, just need to know which section of the app I need to be on. You want the right triangle section. Okay, thank you. Okay. So now some of those uh, apps that I looked at, you can't rotate the thing around. So it might be a, it might be a backwards triangle. So the app I use, you can rotate this triangle around and it's in this position. That's what makes it good. So on this leg of your triangle, whichever position that it's in, in this case, you want to enter 200 in that part of the app. Okay, see that on that leg of it? Okay, then on here, with our drawing here, this would be 50 inches. Then you, then you call Professor Pythagoras and 
Uh-huh. Don't you want 300 on that one? Well, I'm going by, oh yeah, 300. I'm sorry. 300. Yep. Thank you. What's the name of the app? Uh, Diagonal. It's what I use for my Android. Triangle calculator instead. Yeah. Um, yeah, 300. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then you're going to want 50 squared plus 300 squared. We use one called triangle. Yeah, triangle. 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 Triangle.
Okay, you get it, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that Bob will be doing all the time. You. <laughs> <laughs> you correct me. Okay, so, yeah. So anyway, getting back to like this over here on your uh, triangle path. Okay. So for those there, it would be this 225. And then... That would be just 25 for here. Okay. And then for the, your outside ones, that would be 75 total for 150. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Just have to get that imaginary one. I just I would be tempted to add the imaginary heel delts to it. I, you know, I mean, because some of those heels. Could well, I just kind of drew these in here just to, uh, you know, I can actually take these away. And you're uh, you're at the same thing. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll shut up now. <laughs> Just tack the 225 on the bottom of my imaginary keel there. Okay. Okay. Everyone confused now? The decimal's well, oh, I'm going to measure my line, how careful am I being? Because yeah. when I make that knot, it's going to be... Oh, no. That's... Yeah, when you put the knot in there, the knot should be the same across all your bridle lines. Mm -hmm. So this. It's going to shrink that one inch or a half inch. Uh -huh. but so point, you're okay. Okay. Yeah. And the right. point is that, having, that if one line is an eighth of an inch shorter than it measures to, it's not going to matter. No. I usually make all my lines to about an eighth of an inch of each other. You know. <laughs> I'm a weaver. I use some of my weaving tools. Like, yeah, although, actually, I bought Billy Yarn Counter when I got my last one. So we'll he had go into that. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, right I can just go into that. Okay, so that question is already to measure so. quad lines. Okay, how, how do we make a bridle line? Okay, so I make lots and lots of bridle lines. So let's make one real quick here. Now, Excuse me. in this case, no, I'm sorry. I'm just going to use a quick overhand knot. Now, lately I've been uh, running my, uh, weaving my uh, lines back into themselves. Rather than this, it just looks better. And, Using a fed type thing. Yeah, I got, I got to my fit kits if you want to look at those. But anyway, that's how I did it on my parafoil. These are all woven into each other. So this is kind of basically how I do it at home. I've got an 18 foot long table. I put my clamp down there. Got my measuring tape. Although I got craft paper on there, so I'm worried about it all marked off anyway for different kites. And this niche. And I do not pre stretch my lines. I know a lot of people, they, they take the kite lines, they hang them up, they put, you know. Weights on, and they let them hang there all night. Uh, I just pull it a little bit taut just to kind of get the straight out of it. Take my pin and put a mark on it. <coughs> Thank you. Then, of course, I'm not going to cut that. Then I, well, I'm almost going to have to cut that. Put these scissors. I gotta use did I bring scissors with me? Yeah, yeah there's scissors in the fit. Yeah. If not, there's scissors over I can go grab them. Okay, mind you. It's in here. Sure. Yeah. 
No, and they're like plastic. Yeah. Paper scissors for one of my classes, so I can use that to cut kite line. That's fine. I have paper scissors. Because I was supposed to take the uh, curry line to the class. I finally cut them all off. That's the one. Okay, so. No, that's okay. I'm you put your loop in here. Yeah, that's okay. I'll I put it over my clamp, bring it down, measure it, put my mark right there, and then I tie my overhand knot right there on my. That's our stopper knot. That's what you call a stopper knot. Okay. Okay. So, did you guys bring your uh, kite line? Tie some knots. I got some over there. So we might want to all gather together here so you can see how I do this. <laughs> Every time I do this, people always screw it up. So, you can just ask it and I don't need to be this specific in Caitlin's class. Because I asked it. I think I got enough. This is a pretty simple knot. Uh, Premier uses it. The Chinese use it, the Colombians use it, uses it. Uh, they also use what other knot. Uh, and it's it's like this fisherman's knot or something. And I'll tell you what, once it gets cinched down, it's almost impossible to get out. You've almost just got to cut it. But this knot you can get out. But it won't come out on your once everybody kind of gather around here. Okay, I'll try to Just lay, lay it down on the table. Okay, we're like this. Now pick this end up here. Just put it over there. Give yourself plenty of line to work with. Put that stopper on a little further. Yep. Okay. Let's do this just like I've got it. All right. Yeah, give yourself plenty of slack here. I can whip these out just... Okay, so now, pick it up, and we're gonna bring it under like this. I think that's good. No, you're going under. I'm going under. Going under, bring the knot with you. Bring the knot with you, okay? Now, pick this up. We're gonna drop it down through here. Bring the uh, knot with you. Yeah, bring that. And there you go. We'll just kind of clean that up. Okay, let's go a little bit into. Uh, Pilot kite tuning, because you really can't tune uh, a flow form very, very much, you know. And we'll get into how to correct some of the problems. But for uh, a pilot kite, you can actually tune these rascals. Everything else being okay, but just like on a, a flow form, if they're you know tilted one side or the other. You know, once again, you're looking at this from the ground. But if it's, you know, got that tilt like that, it's because you've got too much lift on this side. So you just shorten this B line. And usually you shorten it about a half inch at a time. A lot of times you don't take much. Half inch, inch, that's all you need. Provided everything else is okay. And uh, a lot of times if you're building a pilot kite, one of the older style Peter Lins that you find out on the internet, those plans, a lot of times you gotta do that. Is just tune it. One of the few things you don't actually have to tune is a pilot kite like that. So it's pretty easy to do. And if you wanna get real detailed into how to tune one of these old style Peter Lynn pilot kites, you can go to the Peter Lynn website and look at the uh, Peter Lynn himself letters 
And he goes into a lot of detail on these pilot kites. I mean, a lot of detail, a lot of depth. And uh, <laughs> it's more than what I can comprehend. But uh, yeah, but for me, it's short the bead on either side. That, that's pretty much it for just tuning one that's a little bit off. Okay, now, where doesn't want you sending it back to the casino. No. <laughs> well, they don't make that style anymore anyway. And thank God the Gumber's not making them anymore. So why would you just adjust just the B line? Okay, the B is right here at the, uh, kind of the apex of the, of the rip, the okay. camera. Uh -huh. So if you pull this down, you reduce the lift of this. Oh, you're actually changing the airfoils. Yeah, you're changing the airfoil. Okay. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. So it reduces lift, so it brings it down. It does, okay. Yep. So it's a pretty simple thing. <laughs> so technically, you could do that over here if you had the... Uh, B-line. Yeah, B-lines. I've seen some, uh, some people have formed this got another set of bridle lines back here. I don't know if that's for that purpose or, I don't know, but most of them are just going to have those out in front. Okay, so we've kind of gone over that. So, So, okay. Now, what if your kite just isn't flying right? What do we look for if your kite's just not flying right? Let's say you've, you've come up here and you've already uh, tried shortening this, this line over here, but it was tilted. All right? Or maybe it's just going all over the sky. Not one of the things people do, they come up here and they start shortening these outside bridle lines, or they try all sorts of things. But what you need to do, if your kite's just not flying right, try to find out what's wrong with it, you know? And there's a lot of things you can check to see just what might be wrong with it. So, let me get, uh, I want to get my pointer turned. So of course you got your bridle lines. Make sure your bridle lines are all okay. Once again, make sure you don't have any knots in your bridle lines. You don't have a great big tangle down here like this thing is right now. That can make it fly wonky. On a flow form, if you see a big wrinkle across this top, that's a sure sign that you got problems with the ribs. Okay? Like what kind of problem? Like they're too shift too, too thin or too too tall. They're too irregular. Okay. So different sizes. Yep. So what you have to do, you want to come in here and measure. Even if you don't have that ripple, and it's just all over the sky. Okay, come in here and measure the height of each of these ribs. And they should be all the same height, you know, within maybe a quarter inch of it anyway. That's, that's going to vary a little bit. But measure the, uh, measure the height of this rib. They should all be within about a quarter inch of each other. Now, unfortunately, I've seen these as much as two inches in difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not surprised. But yeah. No. Uh, but as much as two inches from what they oh, should be, okay, and you know they'll be up and down. It's like a seesaw, yeah, all the way across there. Yeah. Okay. Now you can fix that, and it's, it's not it's not a pretty fix, but you can fix it, and you can get your kite to fly good again. Okay. And I've done that numerous times. So. So how do we do that? There. Uh, 
You might want to take notes. <laughs> so, that's always one of the first things I check when you got a flow form up there, it's not flying right, okay? Check all your, your, your rib heights. If in fact you do find them all different heights, all right? You check, you write down your shortest height. So let's just say your, your shortest one is 16 inches and your tallest one is 18 inches. And then in between you might have three or four that's in between. We have to get all of our ribs down to 16 inches. Now how do we do that? Huh? Yeah, please. So, uh, what did I say? 18 inches for the tall one? Okay. So what you do, you come over to the one that's like the 18 inch one. Let's say this was our 18 inch one. We're going to put a basically a two inch pleat in there. Measure this off, I don't know, two inches. Okay, just like that. Put those two marks together. Then you fill that like that. Okay. And then you just fold that over like that. And then sew that down. What's the last bit? Hmm? Okay, I got you sew the pleat. Yeah, you sew the pleat. And then you just sew the, fold that pleat over and sew it. Keep it in the lap. Sew it to itself. Yeah, sew it to itself. Yeah, just sew it down. It's not a pretty fix, but it does fix that problem. And uh, I have fixed them up to a half inch difference. It, anything less than that, it's, it's really hard to do. Does it matter which side you put the pleat on? Like, is it better to have it on the outs, outer edge? No, uh, no. No, because, uh, no, 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 do you flip it that way or that way? No. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Then, of course, if it's an outside one, you want to put it on the inside. Yeah, nice. So, does that please go all the way back the length of the tight? No, you're just going to put it on this outside oh, edge. edge. Yep. Ooh. That's just good enough to bring this bring leading down. edge down where it belongs. Because okay. right. when this leading edge is too tall, the wind is catching that. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Everybody kind of understand that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, that's one thing to check. Now, another. Okay. Right now. <laughs> okay. Now, another thing to check is. If I got a program. Here we go. Rib angle. Not a whole lot we can do to fix rib angle. <coughs> you got your, uh, I think uh, there's a uh, handout on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On here? You got one right here. Well, I got my. Uh, so, on most kites, your rib angle is important for. It sets how much slope we got here. This is what kind of guides our air over the top of that kite. And in our case, like most flow forms, are going to run. 58 to 60 degrees. A Sutton is 56 degrees. 56 on Sutton? Yep, 56 degrees. Okay. Uh, I forget what a Jordan is. That's why they, they tend to want to sometimes close up uh, I mean, when you're first trying to watch it. Yeah, yeah, because you, you're just holding it at a, mm -hmm. that angle. So that's another reason why people say, well, you need to do this and this. But that's that's just mean, kind of a normal flat thing flat for, a, for a kite. That's, that's where they're going to handle on the ground. Yeah, you got to get inflated. Yeah, you got to get them, get them up. Yeah. Okay. So 
So, yeah, that's why I got the uh, probe tracker because, well, I've done this a few times out on the kite fields too, is checking the rib angles. Just to see what those rib angles are. And sure enough, we we found these way off. And then when you uh, come up into here and look, you can see where it's, it was all weirdly stitched. You know, and you just kind of wonder what what where, what's going on there. And there's just nothing you can do with those. You know, when suddenly you're looking for a 58 or 60 degree rib angle, and all of a sudden you got one down here at 45. Or you got some up here at 70 degrees. How does how do how things like that happen? So when you get something like that, there ain't nothing you can really do. And you're not going to tear the whole kite apart, not when they're made of polyester. Okay? So that's so the so it's, it's important to know it, but there's no clear. Yeah, it's important to kind of know that, be able to measure that. But uh, there's not a whole lot you can do. But it's just nice to know that that's not one of your problems. Well, you know. Okay, what else? Uh, what else is there? Okay. So. Okay. And then another thing I'll cover real quick on uh, on these is the jet stitch, the jet shoot. Uh, there was a time when these were coming out of the factories and these were left on the sewn. So uh, I sewed up a couple of them for people when that was first coming out like that. But uh, yeah, that's something. If you've got one that you bought off eBay or something, that is not fine. That might be the reason why. It's just not uh, sewn up in the back. And some of them, some of them were trimmed out, all nicely edged out, and some like they did it on purpose. Yeah, and some of them were just raw, raw edges still. Hmm. So what was left in the sewn? The whole back end. Oh. <laughs> the whole back end. So not just not just the two ends, but the, the whole freaking thing. Yeah, the whole freaking thing. That was a Friday cake. <laughs> yeah. Or a Monday. Okay. <laughs> now, another a thing over cake. <laughs> that uh, unfortunately, uh, and now uh, there's a few of those flying around there. They're not flying around. Is believe it or not. I've never seen, I have seen personally two of these. The center rib was sewn upside down. <laughs> upside down. <coughs> okay. And uh, what it would do, it would fly up a little bit in the sky and then it would gently roll over and come down. And it took myself and Tom Clark quite a while to figure out what the hell that was wrong with that night. We took it down to his basement, we hung it up upside down because he had this real nice basement. And we looked at it, looked at it. Yeah, we got to looking and it upside down. Roof was upside down. <coughs> yeah, we ended up finding two like that we fixed. Hmm. One we fixed for Dave and one we fixed for another. How many cells were in that guy? Huh? Was that a five cell guy or an eight or something? Yeah. Now this the uh, oh, <coughs> just a couple weeks ago on Facebook, uh, there was a guy he had bought a kite from a guy off the marketplace apparently, and uh, he was explaining what it, the kite was doing, what it wasn't doing, and then I made uh, comments about things to check for, just like we had here. And of course, everybody was writing in, you need to close off the vents and <coughs> cut the front of your ribs off and yeah. all sorts of weird stuff. Uh, but no one was really telling me, look for things that are wrong with it. And I, I actually at one point told me, check to make sure that your 
Say the rib is sewn in correctly. Well, that next day, he posted a picture of it flying. <laughs> what do you see wrong in that picture? <coughs> Anybody fly a 252? Yeah. What's wrong with that picture? Look at that picture. It's like three ribs. Are, like three ribs are in the wrong way. Huh? Are three ribs in the wrong way? Looks like three of them are in the wrong well, way. Well, what's wrong? See the notch? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's not straight. No. It's not an arc. It's a yeah. notch. What the heck happened to that cake? You're talking at the bottom. Rib is too short. Yeah. That notch. That should be a nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That would be weird. Yeah. I said, well, there's your problem right there. Well, it came with a full diaper or something. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Last time I saw that, because that center was upside down. That's when they brought it back, and then they just kind of... <laughs> Make it work. Mm -hmm. They made it work at the factory. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's things like that. Simple things. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those, what's wrong with this picture? Has he fixed it? Do you know? No. Did he believe you? Probably not. No, probably not. <laughs> Last I knew, he was more worried about how the fabric was fraying. Oh, okay. So, but yeah, if you look at it, you can kind of see how it's, you know. Yeah, it's just it's weird. Yeah, it's, it's very weird. It's a weird, weird look. Okay. Okay, so, now, other problems. Let's get into our pilot types. So if you have one of his older 50s or the 90s and it's not flying, check the bridle lines. Now I gave you a sheet that's got measurements on it or what the bridle should be. Mm -hmm. That's something to check for. Now, over the years, uh, let me see, what I have seen these bridle lines on like on a 90, I have seen them 300 inches long. Uh, I have seen them on a 50, I don't know, 210 inches, 220 inches long. I have seen them like 100 inches long on one side, 200 inches long on the other. Just, you know, what, you know, how were they bridling these coming out of the factory? So, you know, I take them home and re bridle them for people, take them out and test fire them, and they fly good. They just fly really nice. And uh, usually you put the bridles on as what they are in that sheet there. And usually the only tuning it seems like I have to do is this middle C back here. Hmm. Seems like I have to kind of, because this uh, center keel will want to flap a lot. Yeah. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So I'll just kind of shorten that middle <coughs> C up a little bit. So tell us what A, B, and C is in center and outside are to show. So there's A, B, did I see A, B, C outside there? Yep, A, B, and C. Okay. Peripherals are they're a whole different animal. Oh, jeez. Like a big or something. Nasty. No, it's not like a blue glove. No, no. No, no, no. No. Parafoil. Like, that like parasailing type stuff. No, it's similar. Or the airflow not. No, parasail is totally different. Okay, so so when it comes to uh, bridling one of these uh, parafoil, uh, there's about as many different ways to bridle one of these things. Those are all bridle lines on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, on your uh, sheet there, curve foil bright, I got uh, three different techniques. Now, I've got this way rigged up uh, on kind of that bottom one. Kind of a self adjusting one. It's, uh, as you can see, this is kind of. I've got, I made a 120 square footer, I don't know, 20 some years ago. 
it will pick me up off the ground at my very light 120 pounds. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll pick me up off the ground. It will. And, uh, let me see. So anyway, of course, uh, parafoils, you got, in this case, you got three rows of seven bridles straight across. Some of your really big uh, parafoils, you know, they can go on forever, it seems like. And when it comes to the length, uh, they can be up to three times the span. They can be really long, I mean really long. And I think I use uh, two on mine, is what I used. So, most of the, I don't know, I don't know if you can really even buy a true parafoil anymore in any place. I have one. Gomberg uh, sold uh, that Kevin Shannon foil. Mm -hmm. That was a real nice one. Real nice. It flew really good. And it usually. Would you include a Jordan Hare in that, in that, in that as a parafoil? Hmm? Would you include a Jordan Hare as a parafoil? No. 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 More like a. You said Jordan Hare's more like a pilot? It's more like a, a flow form. Okay. Okay. It's like a Jordan. That's all it is. Well, that is, but uh, yeah, so here's a pilot. I mean, you can, all sorts of different ways to bridle these. Anybody in the parafoils, we need to? We have one, but. Oh, you have one? What kind do you got? I don't remember what it is. Do you remember? You've seen it, I think, Mark, but I don't. Does it fly? Yeah, it flies oh, it really it flies well. very well, actually, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we... We've got, we've, got a, we've got a big parafoil, and then we've got the... And the fi the goldfish cake is also... Oh, okay. well... For, it, it's made like a parafoil. Don't fuss with it, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to fuss with the goldfish. They yeah. don't... They, they have more issues than the, the yeah. parafoil does. But anyway, this, this one here, this little uh, one here, is, uh, I got set up for self-adjusting bridle on it. So, you know, once you had it basically tuned, it would adjust itself to whatever wind you had. This is how the Kevin, uh, I think it's the Kevin Shannon that Gomberg sold, uh, was set up. Worked really well. But, yeah, there's this, there's a lot going on with the parafoil. Yeah, um, the parafoil is why I have this. <laughs> Yep. Bill, Bill cut the, was flying the parafoil and caught the line on something and it cut the line. That's the piece yeah. that got cut. <laughs> so like this one's got the uh, like a self-adjusting bridle. Mine uh, that I built, I've got like the, uh, like this one in the middle here with three adjustable lines. That's how I started out. I just adjusted all three lines to where it flew real good and I just left them. Mm -hmm. I don't ever adjust them anymore. So it's mostly a kind of a higher wind type. Yeah. <laughs> when you say adjust, you meant you move the attachment points of the fan out lines, but at up or back, depending on what the wind needs. That's yep. how you tuned it. Yep. And in this case, this will uh, self adjust to that. Yep. Okay, so what else do we need to cut on? Okay, another thing, if your kite's not flying right, is it could also be your tail. It'll be out of balance. So, so not, it wasn't too long ago, I was actually test flying a kite. The kite was tilting. Yeah, that's the other direction. <laughs> oh, that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, well, different tail. <laughs> different tail on it. So, anyway, I was testing on a kite for them, put it up in the sky, and it immediately just that's tilted, it. I don't know, either to the left or to the right. My first thought was, oh crap, the bridle's entangled. So we brought it down, looked at it, and it, it looked fine. So we put it back up, and it was still, still <laughs> leaning. So, <laughs> Walked it back down, took a look at it all good, and then I said, well, okay, let's, let's swap the tail around. 
when they're really off balance like that, we swap the tail around, put it back up, and sure enough, the tilt the, the other direction. <laughs> tilt the other direction. Mm -hmm. Well, that's okay. So uh, we brought it back down, took the tail off, put it back up, and it flew fine without a tail. Mm -hmm. So that kind of tells you that, yeah, you know, it's the tail back. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of packed things up, went home. So I got uh, my tail out of uh, off one of my kites, went back out of the kite field, and repeated the whole thing, took pictures and a little video. Yeah, they finally figured, yeah, it's the tight, it's the tail bad. But that's not the first time I've seen tails bad. Did they ever measure or figure out what was wrong with it? Yeah, what made the tail bad? It wasn't a perfect isosceles triangle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was more like this than like that. Yeah. Uh, they had us try to stretch it out on the yard. Yeah. Uh, but you can't really do that. Yeah, it's hard. We had it stretched out and we had a kind of a straight edge running down the 150 feet. And, you wouldn't be able to see it. Yeah, you can't really, can't really see it. You kind of could have, but yeah, yeah those it was off just a little bit, then it would switch the weight. Yeah, it would switch the weight, yeah, to, switch the weight to one side. So, mm. yeah, tails are a, a big thing. And I've, I've seen that before. Not very <laughs> often, but you, but you do. Once again, it's everything you have to look at besides maybe the kite itself being bad. It can be the tail. It can be the tail bad. So we, we've seen that before. Even a fuzzy tail. Okay, you everybody know what a fuzzy tail is? Okay. Most fuzzy tails are going to be on a Y and then they come down. Okay, the Y. Let's see, let's see if we've got a Y here. Okay, most fuzzy tails be effective. You're going to uh, come off each corner of the back of the kite, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then of course your fuzzy tail is going to be connected here. Well, if these two legs of the Y are equal, that will throw that kite off. And it doesn't take much, just an inch or two, in a, that fuzzy tail, because the fuzzy tails have a lot of drag in them. They'll throw that dang kite off. Hmm. I've had that happen to me. So it happens to the best of us. Okay, what else? What else? What else? What else? Am I hitting everything? Answering everybody's questions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that would be the same thing if you had a, a bucket tail on your head. Of... Right. Bucket tails as well. They're on a they're on a Y. Yeah. Right. This little sheet here, I don't know how many build kites. Okay, if you ever get into building uh, soft kites, either uh, flow forms or whatever, this might help a little bit. Explains how to sew things in the proper order. But anyway, I, I've used this for uh, a number of years. I've kind of added to it, and I used to have a whole bunch more printed up here, but it was just useless. And uh, for a lot of people, the burrito roll might be the, the hardest thing to do. Everybody know what the burrito roll is? That's why I'm taking the class. Okay. <laughs> uh, I've actually done a couple of uh, videos up, 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 up on YouTube on how to do the burrito roll. That seems to be the scariest thing for a lot of people. But those of us who sell other types of things that actually see the huh? easy part. <laughs> Those of us who sell other things, that's easy. It's the, mm -hmm. you know, the other stuff with kites. That's scary. So, okay, any other questions? Yeah. Anything else? So, and then there's a uh, test I like to do on over kites. That one in plate, right? A simple blow test. If you can blow air through that fabric, then any air is going to blow up. <laughs> but yeah, uh, if you've got, got an inflatable piece that won't inflate, take some fabric, put it up your mouth, see if you can blow through it. If you can blow through it, that piece ain't going to inflate. 
It's a very simple test. Very simple test. Hmm. And of course, you can put your finger through the fabric. It's real good. <laughs> 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 I think I can figure that one out. Yeah. 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 I think we can all figure that out. Okay. Anything else? Well, you've crossed enough trouble. Oh, okay. Another thing. Keel. Keel shape. <laughs> Let me see if I can. Uh, I also sometimes get really yeah. good. Yeah. Don't lie, but it's like. One thing you're going to find with Chinese kites, I think, over the years. Yeah. 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 Here. And uh, this is off of a uh, Chinese right? This is like uh, about 10 or 12 square foot. I fixed a bunch of these for a guy. I put new keels on it. Somebody got something for show and tell? Any other questions? <laughs>